Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. Got a really cool video for you today, and I'm actually leapfrogging some of the other stuff that I'm way behind on. So let me give you a little housekeeping on all the stuff I'm behind on. The Aussie in, uh, audiophile, Shane, I did a Zoom interview with him. I've got more parts of that still to uh, edit and share with you guys. Also, Blue Jeans Cable, Jeff, uh, that went over really well with the power cable and also a testimonial while I was just in L.A. for multiple reasons, as you're going to find out in this video. But Michael gave his testimonial on the Blue Jeans cable. Many of you already ordered. Feel free to contact me if you're interested. But I'm going to actually have more content from that Zoom interview. The Angela Gilbert Young subwoofer amp that's coming in. The subwoofer itself is built. Got all that to share with you. And then the Bach Grand. I teased that in a uh, YouTube short. I've got one of the few in the world here. Going to have a whole detail on that. And actually, it will be at the Florida, not the Grand, but the Bach will be at the Florida Audio Show in a few weeks, and I'll be there. So stay tuned for that. But <laughs> one reason I'm leapfrogging all of this material I'm behind on to showcase something for you today really special is that many people have asked, uh, and I'm known for going out to people's homes and featuring these really extravagant systems, but as well as really high-end, high-IQ audio files. And I hadn't done that in a while, and I got a chance while I was in Los Angeles to visit the home of one of the most extravagant and best systems in the world and got a lot of anecdotal feedback by people I trust. In fact, certain pieces were even put together by people I know as well. And so I knew, <laughs> based on their reports, as well as what I heard about the owner, that this wasn't just a bragging rights high dollar system. This is, I mean, I'll feature almost any system on my channel, whether it's bragging rights, any budget or whatever. But really what I look for, regardless of budget and the cool gear, is I look for, I get most excited about when I'm meeting somebody that is a hardcore audiophile, true audiophile, who's building a system for a purpose and a goal. And he's got, he or she's got that certain sound um, goal in mind and is willing to dedicate not just high dollar gear to it but expertise to put it together synergize and also room set up subwoofers and on all these metrics this gentleman passed that and i was super excited to visit his home now he is a private individual didn't want to be on camera so i'm going to give you a walk through first time using a lapel mic uh having somebody film me so let me know what you think about the audio quality and doing that but uh, this video will just be the walkthrough of the gear as well as my impressions. I'll have music clips in a separate video, but you can only tell so much from music clips. Certainly with this system in particular, you need to be there live to experience the true advantages where it separates itself from the very good and so forth in the hobby. But what's cool about the music clips, you'll get a taste, but also one thing that you're going to notice is that Unique music taste that is really cool stuff, but it's stuff that is not easy to play on most systems and will highlight one of the major strengths of this system. The ability to play complex uh, material that on most systems at high volume will crumble and it reveal a lot of flaws. And so that's one of the other side benefits of the Music Clips video, which will be separate. I'll, I'll share with that later uh, when I get time to curate it. But today I wanted to give you the walkthrough of the gear, my impressions on the gear. And so let's just start off there where this system excelled. Again, overall, one of the best uh, I've ever heard in, uh, and featured on the channel. And on certain metrics, I could say it's the best in terms of I hate to say anything overall is the best. And you're always going to have trade offs depending on what the goals of the person have and also what their preferences for music taste and volume. Those are two things that also play a role and your room and how they manage the challenges of your room. So there's nothing that's ever the best, but on certain metrics, I don't think it would be hard pressed to find a better system, particularly in the area of dynamics, lack of compression on very difficult material, as you're going to hear in the music clips, whether it's opera, horns, and at volumes that are live volume levels, realistic. And that is one of the other takeaways is that everything sounded realistic. Tonally, um, reproduction was not feeling compressed in any way. Microdynamic details, all the things that you expect from a, trying to recreate a live performance in your home, 
there were certain metrics where this was clearly one of the best I've ever heard. And somewhat surprising in a little bit of, for my experience, because it's a horn-based system with avant-garde trios. And if you've been following the channel for a while, I've been a big fan of certain horns, like the Ari Serrata Aurora, Acapellas Ferrons, but those are mega dollars, and these are mega dollars as well. But, I mean, avant-garde trios were at the Exponent, I think two years ago, in a hotel room. And I, if I had a worst of show, I probably would have put them in that category. I don't think anybody would walk away from that room a couple years ago and be impressed with how they were set up in such a confined location. And, you know, it's great to see the gear, but it didn't give people a true impression of what's capable uh, and possible with those speakers set up correctly and that they are horns that you can put in that same category uh, when set up perfectly uh, like it was in this room and synergized with the right gear. So again, you're going to get the walkthrough of the cool gear and this cost no object gear, but a, a particular thing to pay attention to and what separates this gentleman from a lot of others uh, that just buy gear for bragging rights is he engaged the right people. Rick Brown, who you've seen on my channel from Hi-Fi One, to help put the system together. JR with Wham Engineering, Wally Tools. I've done videos with him at my friend Doug's house. He helped integrate rel subs with the avant-garde uh, base towers. Really important when you have that much base being launched in a relatively small room for that amount of base energy. Did a phenomenal job on that metric as well. He put together the expertise, and he has his own expertise and his own really good hearing and experiences with different types of gear. And he's not one to just knee-jerk change gear out. Uh, he's very thorough with how he metrics things. He's had, and it's not just based on price. One quick story to share with you guys, again, because since he's not going to be on camera, uh, is that he had mega dollar transparent audio cabling. And he's kept on finding something annoying uh, with high frequencies. And they narrowed it down to a change in cables, believe it or not. Maybe something with the network boxes of transparent or whatnot. And he transitioned to a much less expensive Revelation Audio Labs cable. And that solved the problem for him. So again, it's a high IQ audiophile with a specific goal. He's basically analog. He's got over 15,000 records, and you're going to see a whole sidewall full of records. And he's got an unbelievable turntable, uh, one of the best in the world for sure. And I actually works with Mark Doman, who worked with the company that produced uh, at one time the turntable he has. And he's got some unique cartridges. But again, these aren't mega dollar cartridges, but they fit his goal and his sound preference. And so, again, on metrics that dynamics, microdynamics, scale, Everything that horns do great, as good as you could hear. And you'd be hard-pressed to find a better system in those metrics. Now, were there any horn colorations or downsides? Well, of course, no system is ever going to be perfect. If you're used to MBL Extreme, if you're used to using the Bach in terms of three-dimensional soundstage, wider than the speakers and, and the plane of the performance comes out here, yeah, you will notice certain differences with horn bass being a little bit different how they present the sound stage. They're more directional, so they, you know, room treatments are a little bit different how they inf impact the room, plus or minus. Uh, so you can say there are some trade-offs there from other type of systems, but I did not detect the normal major trade-offs I hear with horns. Um, basically, I saw exactly what this gentleman was going for. And when he played the music and he played that he likes and he played at the volume, I can see why he's feeling pretty much he's at end game. I don't think he'll ever stay in game because he's always looking for anything else that can take him to that next level. He's very sophisticated in that regard and um, anxious to see what he does next. He is going to do some differences with the room treatments, but he's already at a point where you're going to be hard pressed uh, to find a better system. Now, again, analog, when you do hear the music clips, there's the normal thing that I've always talked about. There's going to be noise floor, ticks and pops. But one thing that is a takeaway for me, and I like to do that when I go to these people's systems, is hear that because you do get an impression once you hear the trade-offs that they're sacrificing uh, for a little bit of noise floor, the trade-offs can be easily worth it and 
what you focus on ends up being the music more than the, that noise floor issue. So again, I love seeing stuff that takes me out of my normal comfort zone and gives me an impression that, yes, I can see exactly why. And it also is a macro point in this hobby is that there is no best for any one person. Um, but what is really cool is when somebody has achieved their goal and they're not just flipping gear, they're not just buying for bragging rights. This is a true high-end, high IQ audiophile who also has, what really blew me away, I was expecting this great room and heard a lot about it, but he has a home theater with Wisdom Audio gear. And if you're a longtime subscriber, you know I have Wisdom Audio speakers. Those were my dream speakers back in 2000. And I've also loved their home theater demo at Exedia with the Quantum LED a few years ago. Amazing uh, home theater. So we did spend a little bit of time in there. I have a YouTube short on that. Maybe I'll put up a little bit excerpts for you. That was phenomenal as well. So beautiful home. Great guy. Can't wait to uh, see what he has in store in the future and visit him again next time I'm in Los Angeles. But without further ado, enjoy this little walkthrough of the gear and the music clips will be in a second video. All right, guys, I am in Beverly Hills, California, in an amazing room, over 14,000 records. Uh, and this is one of the best room treatments you can have is this, this room, this uh, level of LPs. But look at this phenomenal gear. We were talking about avant-garde trios with external uh, super tweeter. This is state of the art in terms of horns. And one of the rare times that I've heard horns set up perfectly for the room and the type of music and the volume he listens to. This is going to be a treat when I get to the music clips that I'm going to show you guys later. Coming over here, these are the David Burning amps that you've seen on my channel, Rick Brown, and when I've visited his home, this is their set uh, amps, the newest ones. But what's super rare about this one, I've never seen amps on minus K platforms. If you guys are longtime subscribers, you'll know that Minus K makes these basically for electron microscope vibration control platforms. And for turntables, this is part of the dome and turntables and others, uh, Continuum and all those other ones have kind of uh, used this to isolate. But for an amp, I've never seen it. And it's extra difficult to do it for an amp because the weight requires much bigger, but also is an asymmetrical weight with amps and cables being attached to the back. So these take a little bit of work to calibrate, but this is the nth level of vibration control that I've never seen before ever uh, on an amp, minus K platform. But then <laughs> if the other thing I haven't seen before, although I have seen these bass horns, uh, these are made by avant-garde. These are avant-garde trio horns. They make the matching bass horns. I've seen and heard these before. Never as good as I've heard them here. Uh, but they also are supplemented with REL25 subs on each side that are identical to the one I have at my house, but I only have one. And JR with Wham Engineering and um, Wally Tools has basically calibrated this whole sub setup different crossover points. And because it's symmetrically loading the room, it's not technically a swarm, but when you have this many base modules in different areas, using different phase controls and crossover slopes, you can get that same asymmetrical loading of the room. Sounds phenomenal. Uh, cables, he actually has a very interesting story with cables. He's had mega dollar transparent cables that actually caused a problem um, in certain high frequencies. He's switched over to Revelation Audio Labs, and very happy with them. We've got some Yorma cables to the base modules. Um, and you'll see incline also cables. There's also it's a little bit of a tweak, maybe controversial, but it does something with the high level. Uh, it's called a Schwerzinger, I believe. Um, I've never seen that before, but um, he said it definitely helped out. So... Again, certain things I've never seen before, which is rare. And the super tweeter was something that a local dealer gave him to try. He did it with and without and um, found that it was, uh, I think it's Sopra. I've never heard this brand before. It's Sopra Nina. Um, and he's happy with that as well. Room treatment wise, these are acoustic geometry and these are diffusers, uh, not absorbers. He's got them strategically placed in the room. 
again, doesn't need a whole lot. This room is very nicely treated, uh, not a lot of echo. You'll see cable elevators, and also these are from, uh, I didn't recognize them. These are Norman Varney cable pillows. Um, and he's trying those. This rack, HRS rack, nothing to sneeze at. This is about as good as it comes in terms of equipment rack, solid. And then, of course, the equipment on here, EMIA, I believe is what this, I've never heard of this before. It's a auto former based uh volume control and then this is a very rare piece now the oppo is out of business but a modified one by modright you can tell the tubes back here and then the separate power supply this is the oppo 205 i believe i'll get all the specifics and uh, model numbers put them in the description for you but m many of you are going to recognize this gear vac state-of-the-art preamp uh, separate power supply. Phono stage wise, um, he uses a separate step up transformer per cartridge. And those are over here because he's got two cartridges for his. Um, he's basically analog only. He um, does have that CD player, but this is state of the art continuing lab. This basically is all comes together the stand the power supply everything the cartridge um, is separate this is an audio technica cartridge with a diamond um, synthetic diamond but um, cantilever and stylus and then there's a, also I'm not going to be able to see this in the back here but there's a cartridge by analog relax which i've never heard of before but he's got two different uh this is a cobra s tone arm and He's actually worked with Mark Doman to improve some things on these turntables, even the clip, the uh, clamp that Doman makes now. And uh, what was kind of funny is that this tone arm is so thick that when it would go across the record, it would hit the uh, clamp. So they're actually making some modifications to fit for this type of uh, tone arm. So we're talking about a very sophisticated high-end audio file that works with designers and has a great ear based on what I heard here. This is like, this is not just bragging rights gear here to buy it for bragging rights. This is somebody that really spent a lot of time understanding what he wants to achieve and brings in the resources. On top of this gear, he's brought in JR, Rick Brown, and others, Steve McCormick, to come out here and really dial this system in. And that's what I've always been t talking about on this channel. This gear on its own, state of the art, but you can put this gear and even those speakers at Expona last year did not sound anywhere near as good as they sound right here. So it's all about fitting it to your music taste, which he's got great taste in opera. I got to listen to opera you're gonna hear for the first time, probably on my channel. Some great Kenny Burrell and even some Steely Dan. Got a quite great variety of stuff to show you guys. Uh, but this is a true state-of-the-art system that I definitely will remember for pretty much forever. But we got even more to show you guys because he's got a Wisdom Audio Home Theater. So stay tuned for that next.